evangelism 101 and and ministry. I, I love it. You know, and I was just as I was talking, I was thinking, man, we've seen some things. And I was talking about the tent revival when we dedicated the land. Y'all remember that? Remember that week long we had? And first time I ever, first time I ever threw water was at that revival. People, everybody went out. The p- children were praying in tongues, filled with fire. The o- older people that were on the outside of the tent though, fell in the mud. It was storm. Only we would have a tent revival in a driving storm. Amen. Amen. And if people were out in the mud, they had to pull them in. Adam and some of the other ones had to pull them in from the mud. Man, I'm telling you, we have some church. And I love church, don't you? You know, I I truly believe if we had, if the body of Christ would rise up, we wouldn't have New York being able to kill babies, you know, after when they're not, people are nine months pregnant. I'm going to tell you something. We don't rise up. You you think, you you think uh, Hitler had something going on. I'm going to tell you, it's going to, y'all, if you don't think that, that the devil's going to take this, and then pretty soon it'll be, well, if they, they don't know better, by the age of three, you know, you can just eliminate them. I'm telling you, you, think, you don't think it's coming? You don't think the devil's going to try to go? The devil don't take nothing and stop. He wants to go farther, farther, and farther. And there's got to be a generation, there's got to be a voice coming out of the wilderness that says we've had enough. You know, and I'm going to tell you, I've had enough. And I know God's had enough, and I'm not just talking about that. You know, the Bible says that you're yay, be yay, or yes, yes, you no, no, right? You know, decide today, choose you this day who you're going to serve. You're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. You're either going to be hot, you're either on fire, or you're dead as a doornail. There ain't no in-between. There ain't no this, I'm playing church today, I'm playing saved today, I'm playing, I'm playing boarding, I'm playing filled with the Holy Ghost today. I'm going to tell you, you either got the fire or you don't. Amen. You either you either you either it or you ain't nothing. Come on. I'm telling you right now. Your confession of your mouth determines your destination. The very words that proceed out of your mouth are going to determine where you go and what you do. Amen. You know, you speak to the new past. You speak to your life and and what you what you've become is what you've tolerated. And I was thinking about this. If you would listen to the voices in in in, in the words and the people that God had put in your life, you wouldn't be in the predicament you're in right now. God has spoke to you, and he spoke to you on many occasions, but yet you chose to just blow it off as church is normal, or blow it off as that's just somebody talking to me again. Let me tell you something. God is speaking into the earth, and God is speaking into your life, and you need to take those nuggets and do something with them. It's your, it's your duty to take the words that are spoken in your life and do something with them. Say, my confession will determine my destination. Amen. I can, say, I can call a traveler and say, I want to go to California. I want to go to Hollywood. Well, she's going to book me at LAX or Orange County, right? Amen. She's not going to send me to Iowa. I spoke it. you got to speak that same thing. Where do you want to go? Where do, who do you want to be? Where do you want to do? What do you want your life to be? Oh, my life, my, my history has determined where I'm at today. No, no, you go make history, right? Let the history be history, and you go make history. Go speak to the new past. If people want to get left behind, let them get left behind. Amen. As for me in this vessel, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me in this house, we're going to serve, serve God with gladness, right? 2 Corinthians 13 and 1 says, This will be the third time I am coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. Every word shall be established. Every word that is spoken from the word, every God, every word that is spoken from God that he uses a man to speak through is going to be established. Everything that I've spoken that God has gave me to speak to is speaking to your life and speaking to anybody else's life is going to be established. God does not speak a word, amen, and it don't come to pass. The problem is, the reason people don't see it happening is because they don't believe it's going to come to pass. They don't believe when somebody says, hey, I see you in this place. I see you doing this. I see you doing that. And you blow it off as, well, he's just talking. He's just church talk. I'm going to tell you, we ain't here to play church. We're here to change the world. We're not here, amen, to do church as normal, go home and live like the devil, amen. We are here to speak life into the world. 
And I'm telling you if, you, if you don't believe that's what we're up to here, amen, you're probably in the wrong place. You've got to trust the words that have been spoken. God's word has already been settled, right? Everybody says settled. What he said, do you believe what he said? He meant it. It was settled in heaven, and it's been established right here on earth. Everything in this word has been established in heaven, and now it's being enforced on the earth. The, problem, the reason that we have New York killing babies and all over this place, we have abortions and even more evil stuff going on, is because the word of God is not being enforced in the earth. And why is it not being enforced in the earth? Because God's, the, the people that are born again, feel the Holy Spirit, have taken a passive act, amen, and for the last 50 years, People, we are laughed at when we're the ones that the world, the United States of America needs. The ones that are laughing at are going to be the ones that are calling on in a short season. It's coming. For And the Bible says in Psalm 119, 89, he says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Amen? Say it's been settled. Come on, it's been settled. you got to be careful what you accept in your life, right? you got to be careful... What you allow to come into your atmosphere. You got to be careful what you allow, amen, uh, to even enter into your ears. You got to decipher that. If somebody's treating you bad, somebody's talking to you bad, you got to shut the door down, walk away, say, Praise the Lord, shake some dust off your shoes, and walk away. That, will leave, that is a better testimony than you trying to fix it, right? You got to be careful what you accept. I'm telling you right now, I was doing some work, I've been doing some work in the house. And my knees start barking, right? My knees say, hey, you're 52, you can't do it. But I'm going to tell you, my spirit tells me I'm 21 and I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me, man. I can get up. I don't need no sleep, amen. I can meditate on God. I can fast. I can do what God tells me to do. I got plenty of time. And if I need more time, all I got to do is believe God for more time. He'll extend the day so I have more time to do what I need to do. Y'all don't believe it. I'm telling you right now, you better believe it. If you're feeling sick, get rid of it, right? If you got financial problems, don't accept it. You got marital problems or people speaking against you or trying to tear you down, don't accept it. Most people get in situations or get in problems and stay in those problems because they accept those issues that come up in their life with their own mouth. Well, I know I'm going to get a bad report. How do you know you're going to get a bad report? I got a bad report when I was 28 years old. I'm 52 now. I haven't read not one report since I was 28. So I don't know if I got a bad report or not. I assume, like I told you Sunday a few weeks ago, that I got good reports because I'm still here. Amen. But some of y'all study. Like I said, you want to know the triglyceride. You want to know that light. You want to know the Israelites and everything else. I said, but I'm telling you right now, you, you don't need to even accept it. You need to believe God for what, he, what he, the, the word's been settled. You need to believe God for what he said over your life. I'm, I'm healed, I'm whole, and I'm prosperous. I believe that. I am who I am says I am. I'm the head not the tail, right? Satan knows that if he can get you to believe or say anything different than the word says, he'll use it against you. Most of you, I'm going to tell you, most of people, most <laughs> Almost every problem you got in your life is because you settled. You settled. I'm not satisfied where I'm at in, in life, in ministry, in any area. I'm not, I, listen, I got a great marriage, but I want it better. Amen. I got a great life, but I want a better life. Come on. I got a great church, but I want a better church. Come on. I got great friends, but I want even better friends. Come on. I got a great job, but I want a better job. My better job is, come on, 2020. Amen. But here it is. Satan knows that if he can get you to say anything, say something different than what the word says about you, he's got you. He will use that door to come in and invade your life and destroy you. Amen. I remember I was telling uh, Jerry and Bobby Shane, one of the greatest things I ever did was get on a plane and go meet Pastor Chris. Through that, I've met so many divine connections. What if I not listen to God? And what if Pastor Chris did not listen to God? How different would this place be today? How different would I be? Jesus said this. You can have what you say. Not, but what, what the problem is, most believers, y'all know Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. We've read it over and over again. But most of us, Jesus said, you can have what you say and what the word says. But not many believers know it or believe it. 
But Satan knows it, and he believes it. Satan knows that if he can convince you and not get your mouth lined up with the word of God, he'll use it against you. He will use the word, amen, every single day against you. He will twist it, turn it, and make it fit his ways and convince you that you're not who God says you are. Everybody and every, all your friends, all your goofy people around you are going to try to convince you that the word of God is not true in your life. Because you're going through a situation, you're going through problems, and things don't seem to be working out. Keep speaking life into it. Keep believing God to move in it. Amen. Keep believing. You know, my, my son, they just announced that they were having a baby, right? How many times, I don't know how many times they say, well, it ain't working, this thing ain't going on, whatever. I said, you'll have a baby. Don't worry about it. I believe God. Amen. I believe that God, I believe what God says. God has told me they're going to have a baby, babies. So they're going to have babies, they're going to have a baby. See, y'all got to start believing you can have what God says you can have. I believe we're going to build a new church. I believe that I'm going to be full-time. I believe that we're going to infiltrate the earth. Amen. I believe that in three weeks when Tim's story gets here, that's going to catapult this place to a new level of impact. <laughs> Here's the problem. Most believers are establishing Satan's word in the earth instead of, in, instead, of, instead of establishing the word of God in the earth. Does that make sense? Most people speak so negative that they allow the enemy to walk in their life and take every footstep. You remember how Pastor Chris was saying, every step we walk, he washes us, he washes us. Well, every step you walk with the devil, when you're going contrary to the word of God, when you've been dishonest with yourself, I'm going to tell you, the only person you're lying to is God. Amen. Satan will let you go as far as you want to go. And if you want to keep speaking wrong, keep confessing wrong, then you're going to keep reaping wrong. Right? When it ain't working out the way it is. Start speaking life. When your husband gets negative, your wife gets negative, amen, speak life. You ain't going to argue with us. Say, praise the Lord, I'm glad I'm happy. I'm saved, healed, and delivered. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm prosperous. I'm not poor. Come on. Amen. You turn it around. The word says healed. The word says prosperous. The word says you're the head, right? Amen. In 1 Peter 2 and 24, it says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree? Remember, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were what? We were healed. Not that you were going to be healed, but that you were healed, Right? Not that I'm going to be prosperous. I am prosperous. Not that I am set free. Not going to be set free. I am set free. Not that I am going to be an evangelist. I am an evangelist. Not that I'm going to speak uh, to the United Nations. I am going to speak to. I'm not. I'm going to. You see what I'm saying? You got to believe what the Word of God says about you. In every situation, I'm going to tell you this. I don't want to back up. I want to go forward. Right. I don't, I don't care what the cynics and the critics and all of them say. It doesn't really matter. Pastor Chris told us the other day, we're blessed coming, we're blessed going, right? Amen. But we got to see ourselves as blessed. You know, I was thinking about it today as we were, we were putting together, uh, working with uh, Pastor Tim Story's uh, assistant, and I was, I was thinking about how exciting it is that others see the anointing of God in this place and want to come be a part of this. Amen. But I'm telling you, we, you are a light on a hillside, and the enemy's trying to snuff you out. You know that little song, Hide Under a Bushel? No. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Right? The enemy's trying to put your light out. He wants you to get negative. He wants you to substitute, amen, the glory of God for something of the world. And the world's got everything now. They were, I heard on the radio, there's going to be like $10 billion bet and gambled on this football game. Could the kingdom of God use $10 billion? If, if, if the devil is using $10 billion, I'm certainly God can, 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 can shoot a little this way, amen, to build a new sanctuary. What do you think? Amen. $10 billion. How much does it cost? I guarantee it's a lot cheaper to get a baby adopted than it is to crucify them. There's thousands of people. But see, we, we sit back and we go, oh, well, you got, you know, it's just the way it is. You know, I'm telling you, till we make a stand, 
until we make a difference, until we start speaking in our own life and we start speaking in our own churches. I mean, the church can't even get it out of it, 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 its own way today. We've got to start speaking life and believing, and we, we'll, we'll gain that power that we used to have. The influence. I believe that Jesus did every bit of this 2,000 years ago. I don't believe that he, I don't believe that he didn't know what was going to go on. Certainly when we see Sodom and Gomorrah, we certainly see a day that we live in today that's a whole lot worse. We see believers that, that can't feed their children. We see believers that can't pay their bills. We see believers that are walking sick. I see people all the time. They post, you know, I, I wish I didn't know, but I see them. They're having problems. They're having sickness. They're having pain. They can't do this or they got chaos. I'm going to tell you, you created all that yourself. Don't get mad. Go look in the mirror. Don't accept what your circumstances say. Don't tolerate it. What you tolerate, you become. Don't tolerate your circumstances. Don't tolerate people speaking negative to you. Don't tolerate. You don't have to. Just say, hey, speak to the hand. Somebody said, peace be still. You got chaos going to your house. Everybody's running around acting fool. Peace be still. You got sickness trying to reign in your house, trying to come against your kids. Peace be still. I laid hands on Garrett so many times and Tyler so many times when they were in the bed running the fever. Amen. My Lord, we throw them in the we, you throw them in the tub with the cold water and all that stuff. I'm gonna tell you this. You know what worked better than anything? Going and praying and believing, not in accepting it. I remember many times. <laughs> I remember Tyler come over with this big knot on the side of his head one time, and. Uh, they were all concerned. They, they were thinking, you know, you know how he is, Lori. They always talk about the negative stuff. He opened the door. He said, Dad, I don't want to die. I said, you know what? You ain't going to die. I said, yeah, that's crazy. I said, I ain't even going to the doctor. I was doing something. With him. I said, stay safe in the doctor. It wasn't nothing. See, I'm telling you, but if you accept it and you start walking in it, then that's what it becomes. A lot of people are sick and a lot of people are going through problems because they seen something on TV, amen, and it convinced you that you got that stuff, right? And next thing you know, you make everything you're going through fit that symptom. So when you go to the doctor, you can tell Dr. Swazelstock, amen, that you got COPD or you got rheumatory something, amen. And next thing you know, you got it. Because I'm going to tell you, I used to go in the late 80s, I said, hey, I got allergies. Good, you get a clarity in D. I've got stomach issues. Oh, here's a prevacid, right? Feel a little woozy sometimes. Well, here's this, here's this. We diagnose ourselves. They just write, right? So if we can do that with a doctor, why don't we do it with Dr. Jesus every day? Amen. Amen. The reason is, we, we, I told you, I've said this many a times. I don't know if Bobby Shane's ever heard this before. But we raise a society of, of children, our generation of people. You know, when I got sick, you didn't go out and play. You didn't, certainly didn't get on your telephone. If you, you didn't miss school. I never missed school. You know why? Because I couldn't go outside and play if I didn't do it. And I couldn't watch the Three Stooges or the Little Rascals or any of my afternoon TV shows if I didn't go to school. Right? But now, y'all heard me say this before, I'm going to say it again. But now we give them chocolate, we give them a teddy bear, we tell them how great it is. You know, oh my Lord, we treat them better when they're sick than we do when they're well. So we rewarded a generation of being sick, and now we, want, and now we say, why have we got all, all these people hooked on all this stuff? Because we have allowed it, we spoke into it. Why do we have a generation of broke people? Because we say, oh, get you a MasterCard. Get you this, get you that, get you that, get you that. That was like, Char, you remember Betty and uh, Betty Rubble and uh, what, was it, what was Fred Flintstone's wife's name? <laughs> Wilma. They would go and they would go to the shop and they'd say, charge it. <laughs> so now we have a whole generation of people that owe more on their credit cards than they do in their house. That's why they can't give. When you got to speak, when you got a problem, speak to the problem instead of creating. Don't substitute the problem for another problem. Amen. Brother Hagen said something one time, senior. And Brother Norville was telling me about this in the pool that night. He said, Bishop, if anybody ever comes up to you and tells you they got money problems, ask them how their giving is. He said, I'll promise you, almost every time, he said, some people are going to fall on hard times, absolutely. And go through a tough time. Everybody has a season, right? But he said, I'll tell you, 99.9 .9 times they don't give. If you don't have seed in the ground, you can't reap a harvest. 
right? If you don't plant seed, you can't get, you, you're not going to get a harvest. So you got to believe God. you got to put something to action. And that's by using your mouth. That's by speaking the words out of your mouth. If you want to go do something, you want a destination, you're not. So you know what? I want to, I'm going to change the world. Come on. I'm going to see people get born again and get saved. I'm going to see people, amen, that were down and out. That everybody, I'm going to tell you, that everybody else gave up on. I'm going to find a diamond in the rough, and I'm going to pull them people out of the rough, amen, and I'm going to go see them change the world. I love it. I love taking people that everybody else gave up on. and speak. You know what I do? Y'all don't even realize this. I look at somebody, and I say, man, I like the guy. I say, you know what? That's a good person. I'm like, but God, I don't know, man. So, you know, have you heard the stories? <laughs> but you know what I love to do? I love to, sp you don't realize this. I spoke into you. I spoke into y'all's shoes. I speak, I speak, I speak. I spoke into your life. I said, no, you want me to make you a mighty nation. I spoke, I spoke, I spoke, I spoke, I spoke. Boom. And then actually, you know, you see him preaching in a prison over in Juan Cao. Right? Next thing you know, you see them ministering and doing things. You minister to the homeless. People that used to, they used to be addicted and in the same place they were, now they're ministering to them. How do you do that? You speak life into them. I've had people say, Bishop, I ain't too sure about that. Well, you pick there. I said, no, nah, I'm sure. I'm going to speak life into them and I'm going to believe in them. Wouldn't you do your children the same way? Wouldn't you do that? Would you give up on them? No, you keep speaking life into them. Because, you know, when they get older, like Garrett, you can't do nothing with them, right? All you can do is pray and speak life into them. I've hung up the phone with Garrett many times, like, Shada, Rabokwea, Abba, Shunama. Come on, Lord, move. Tyler, oh, Lord, I've had to raise hand with Tyler a couple of times. Hey, 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 hey. Pick, he ain't here, is he, is he here? Good. I picked him up at the hospital one night. Second weekend in about two weeks, three weeks, he doesn't end up in the hospital due to shenanigans, right? I go in. They say, if you can get him out of here, he won't go to jail. This is history, right? I want to tell you what happened. He's my son. I can tell you this, right? Y'all are my sons and my daughters, right? You'd want me to do the same thing, wouldn't you? Amen. If I ever have to do this to you, Gwen, we got, it's going to be ugly, right? Praise the Lord. But I'll do it for you. I'm just going to tell you. Lee, I'd do it for you too. You'd be a handful, but I know. I'll do it. So we had to get him out of hospital. I said, if you get him out of here without creating any problems, we'll let him go with you. He's like, I ain't going with you. I saw you're going with me. I guarantee you that. So you know how you know how when people got a little, a little problem, they think they're walking faster and running faster than I. He was running from me, but he was actually running slower than I was walking. So he's not going to go with me, but I'm coaching him toward my car. So I get close to the car. He goes, oh, I'm not going in that car. I'm going there. I said, no, no, no. You're going in this car. Tossed his keys to the station. He said, what are we going to do? I said, drive. I grabbed him, threw him in the back seat. <laughs> this is the army dude, man. Come on now. He's strong. He's, like, he's struggling around. I said, Holy Ghost, give me power, give me strength, amen. I wrapped him, I don't know what the Holy Ghost said, but the Holy Ghost wrapped him up. So he's like, what's going on back there? I said, just drive, we're in Millageville. And I began to pray and I began to speak over his life. I will tell you in the midst, of, now I struggle for 30 minutes. But after 30 minutes, amen, he went silent. Power of God hit him. Now he done got married, done got a baby, and had to drink it over a year and a half. I'm telling you, sometimes you just got to horse whip them into place. When they're sick, when they ain't doing good, when the devil says, oh, no, we can't use them no more, you start speaking life. See, spiritually, I didn't have you horn buckled in the back seat, amen, Aubrey. But when you were in that hospital, amen, spiritually, I had you in the back seat, amen, praying and saying, believing and saying, Aubrey's got to go to the nations, Lord. Aubrey's got to go to Africa. She can't be sick. Come on. Why do you can't come in here looking? I don't know, you I can't come in here all old. I said, this is the nicest man I've ever met in my life and the nicest lady, man. And, and she's so quiet. 
I said, God said, she'll preach. I said, all right, God, I'll start speaking. How many times have you been, how many, come here. How many times you, I'm going to show you something. How many times she going she, she gonna to tell you the truth? She said, yes, she was army, right? And he said, sure. How many times have you be up here trying to work? And I go, ha! Huh? You didn't even realize it, but I had you hornbuckled in a, in a hole speaking life into you. You just thought I was running around yelling at and acting crazy. Like, I, so y'all think I'm running around throwing water and acting silly, amen? What I'm doing is I'm grabbing you up and I'm trying to speak life into you so that I can pull the destiny out of you. I want somebody to grab me. I've had her, and I've had her too, amen? Spiritually speaking, amen? Come on, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Bishop, there's nobody here. It was on Wednesday night one time. We got, look at all these people we got here now. You remember that night? There's nobody here, Bishop. I said, are you here? Yeah. Go sing. Okay. You know what you do? Yeah. Go sing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's what she does. Now look at what she's doing now. Where she what she actually keeps putting. Here I am. Y'all see the the, the physical side. <laughs> I don't care about the physical. When I see her with those pictures, I go, Oh, yeah, I knew her. Not fit this always good. But I'm I said, look where she come now. Right? Come on. It's the same way. It's what you speak life into, your situation. Every area of your life, you've got to take hold of it and not allow the devil to come. If you, if you give the enemy one inch, one second, then he will run, he will run, he'll run ramshot over your life. But if you don't give him no opportunity, I wouldn't even let Tyler talk in the back seat. He said, you hit me. I said, no, you hit your head on the outside of the door on purpose. Getting in. Hopefully that knocks some sense in you. But by the time we got up toward the church, he said, aren't we close to the church? I don't know how you can see because I had him down the floorboard. He said, I want to go play the drums. And he started singing. And you may say, well, you know, that was just him doing it. No, no, no. The power of God is real. And if you believe it and you finally had enough of it, then wrap them up and start speaking life into them. Even your enemies start speaking into them, and they'll quit messing with you too. The devil don't want to mess. When the devil looks at you, he sees the whole army of God, he'll walk away the other direction. Trouble. See, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of good people say this, trouble follows me everywhere I go. Yep, you just spoke it. It does. I used to do it. Every time I go on vacation, there's a problem at work. Well, every time I go on vacation, there'll be a problem at work. I'm going to quit saying that, and now don't worry about it, right? There's no more problems. See, it sounds, doesn't it sound elementary? Doesn't it sound elementary? But it works. Through the toughest trials of my life, I would just look at the situation and speak life into it. When there was nothing else I could do, I couldn't make my wife happy. I couldn't make you happy. I can't make nobody happy. But I speak life in the situation. Give it to God. And I watch. I watch it. I watch it. I watch it. I watch it all work out. We all are small church. Mm, you don't see what I see. <laughs> What's small about us? Are you powerful? I'm power. You're persistent power, right? Powerful. So we don't have to take any of the stuff that the enemy tries to throw our way. No, 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 no. I will not participate in your stuff today, devil. I will not. Oh, y'all ain't cra y'all out crazy over there, okay? Y'all just going that crazy. I'm going to change the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all go over and argue about what y'all gonna have for dinner. I'm headed over to. I'm headed to uh, Nairobi. While y'all hiding, slumbering, and sleeping, y'all already know this. I've got some more people fixing to go to Juan Cayo. Come on, y'all, you know it. How bad do you want it? How bad do you desire it? How much do you want to really change the world? How much do you really want to be an impact? You have the power to speak it and walk it out yourself, right? 
You can do it with your seed. You can do it with your mouth. You can do it with your actions. You've got so many different things, if you're a believer in here, that, that you can, can make, make a difference. difference. How, How bad do you want it? I want, I want it bad. bad. I, I want it bad. I want to see another child get up off the ground in America that was crippled. This is one of the hospitals here. You know why right now? Because the church has gotten so weak, they don't even want us in the hospital. Right? Tell your circumstances and your situation. And some of you circumstances are living in your, in your house, in your bed, in your house. Come on. Tell your circumstances, either line up with the word of God or peace be still. Come on. Tell your circumstances to line up with the word of God. Then you'll start seeing not only your circumstances change, but you'll also see their circumstances change. Every time there's trouble, speak life into it. I'm going to tell you something today that happened. I was coming from the cooler back toward Monroe through Loganville. And, and you know, you, I'm usually on a quest to find something to eat. So... I come, come to the intersection. Y'all got stories like this. So I just want to tell you something because I was able to pray. And I said, well, let me turn right here. I was heading this way. As soon as I turn, something sometimes you get to go turn left. I said, I'm going to turn left. Let's go in a different direction. I turned left and I drove up. Within 15 seconds before then, a head on collision where the car flipped over and got hung into a power line. The lady got thrown out, was laid on the in the grass, and the other lady was still in the car. Where I was, I was trapped. I couldn't, I couldn't quite get over there where there was other people that got over to them. But I was just thinking about this, and I said, God, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the circumstances. It looked like everybody was alive. I couldn't believe, you know, it was just amazing. God, let everybody be okay. I believe, and I said, thank you, God, that I didn't keep traveling straight. And you all got stories that way, but don't you know there's, that God's watching when you're not watching? You know what I mean? Thank God we got God watching over us when we ain't got enough sense to, right? Hey, Amen. I'm looking for something to eat, and God's diverting my way so I can be here tonight. Don't accept what the situation says. Don't accept what the circumstances say. Don't accept what your people in your circle are saying. Take authority over them in the name of Jesus, right? Amen. Do what Jesus did. Pick up the word of God and read it to them. And tell, tell them to line up with the word of God. And you'll start seeing their circumstances, your circumstances change. I want to see circumstances change. I want to see my nation change. I want to have an impact in our nation. I want to have an impact. You know what? I would love no more than God tell me to stay right here in Covenant because there's 10,000 people coming every single night for revival. I'd love no more than that. But you know what God's going to do? He's going to send you to where you got to go and put you in front of the people you got to be in front of. Remember what he told them? He said, if they won't heed it, take it somewhere else. Come on. Say this we say, the just shall live by faith, not by sight. You believe that? Look at say, believe God's word. Believe God's word more than your feelings. Right? You, you need, right? You want a house? Start speaking a house. Where's, where, where, where do you want the house at? Have you found one? Why haven't you found one? How are you going to get one if you don't know what you want? You're not going to know you want a Chalupa Supreme Value Mill unless you go look and see it on the thing right there, right? You got to see it. You got to know it. I want the world, and I want it now. How you going to get the world? I'm going to speak to it. I'm going to tell the world. I'm going to tell the devil. Tell the world. Hey, I got a voice. What do you, what do you got to say? I'm going to say what the Word says. What are you going to preach? I am who I am says I am. You catch that. What do you want? You know what? You ain't got it because you ain't said it. What do you want? You want a baby? Beast? Say it. Oh, God, please. No. Hey, walk around. 
You want to get pregnant? Put paternity clothes on. Walk around. But I'm with him. Right? You want a job? I'm going to tell you. You want a job? You get dressed up? You know, you want a Chick-fil-A job? Draw your C on here. Walk around and have a Chick-fil-A owner. Do what you got to do. If you get arrested for that, I'll come get you out of jail. You want to be an evangelist? Start talking like an evangelist. Amen? You want to be a bishop? You got to start operating like a bishop. Come on, you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to see the world change? How much, you, how much, how long are we going to tolerate what's going on in the world? I know I'm, I know I'm a little out, a little, I'm, I don't sound mad, do I? I'm, I'm a little frustrated with the devil. I don't want to sound mad. How long will we tolerate this? Does it not bother you? Does it not bother you our children are messed up? Does it not bother you that our world, I mean, I'm telling you, watch, don't even, Lord, I have to watch National Geographic every night, and I can't watch nothing. I have to watch, the giraffe is gently walking across the plain. And the female lion, I can't even watch that anymore, because the female lion is trying to get on the giraffe, trying to kill the giraffe. Right? There's nothing. This world needs our help. This world needs you. It needs you to speak to the people. Your children need you. Take them out of the circumstance, amen, and start speaking new circumstance. Start allowing, listen, stop allowing them to, stop allowing them to be your circumstance. I'm free. I love Garrett. Praise God. I'll speak life into him. He's got his own life. Come on. Everybody looks at and say, feelings change. His word doesn't. It doesn't. Your size can change. Your clothing can change. His word don't. Tyler in the back seat of that car was the same little baby I brought home from the hospital the same way. Come on. Sabrina in the office that night was the same Sabrina that sat between my seat and Stacy's seat in the back seat, right up there, amen, the bubbling little 10-year-old, amen, the same one. I said, one day you're going to see great things. It's the same one. How you feel, say how I feel, has nothing to do with the Word of God. Say hoping won't get it done. Say there ain't no faith in that. There ain't no faith in that. Hope has no substance, right? Come on, listen to me. You must learn to release the ability of God, right? Through your faith-filled words. Let me say it again. You must learn to release the ability of God, right, in you through faith-filled words. What did I tell you today, Tracy? He's living in who? You. You have all the ability inside of you. All you do is release it. The enemy wants to shut it. God wants to open it. He don't want nobody to see the light. He don't want nobody to see you. He wants you to be Santa Claus. He wants to live just to be over there hiding somewhere, not doing nothing. Serena, he wants you to go somewhere else and not show up here, right? Come on, persistent power. He didn't want you here. He wants you to stay out in the world. He wants you hanging all them goofy people still. Now you got to walk away from it and speak your new circumstances. Right? So I'm going to say it again. You got to release faith filled words. You may look broke. Don't ever say you're broke. Just say, I choose not to pay this bill today. I will choose to pay it at a... God, I'm giving and believing you. Come on now. Look at your neighbor and say, your body will obey your words. Say, your circumstance will obey your words. Whether it be good or bad. I mean, praise the Lord. Lee had been working in my house. 
I'll hear him in there grunting and groaning and grunting and groaning because he's like me. I'll say, you got this, brother. He said, I'm getting older. I said, nah, you're getting younger. I don't know. You're, you're young. You feel good. You're doing a great job. I said, you can't retire till you get done with this one. I said, don't you think? See, I'm speaking faith. He don't even realize that. I'm speaking faith for the word. Hey, just check it. Make sure you ain't quit yet. You can't quit. If you quit, I told his wife, if you quit, I'm going to kidnap you and bring you back over here. You, it's funny, right? But you, that's why you can't give up on somebody. If you leave me, Lil, I will come and find you. I'm telling you right now, I will come and find you. Wally, I will come and find you. Wally, don't show up for two. I'm coming looking for you. I'm going to find you, amen. And if I have to throw you in the back seat physically, that, that's going to be a sight, but we'll do it. You ladies, you know, you know, you have to get somebody else. I can't do it. What do you see? What do you see? I see people that have the ability of God, supernatural ability flowing through them that can do all things through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens and strengthens me in every area, right? I, I just can't sing. Have you ever tried? I can't pray. Have you ever, have you ever spoke? Can, can you, I know y'all talk, right? These, these are words you can't text. You got to talk. You got to use your mouth. You can't hit the rock. You got to speak to the rock, right? Speak to the circumstances. Tell them to line up with the word of God. Believe God. I believe this February will be the greatest February this church has ever experienced. The church, now what I just said, this church has to obey what I just said. Use your words, and I'm going to knock this thing out. We're almost done. Use your words, your faith-filled words, to triumph over situations instead of putting you deeper into bondage. We can all complain. Everybody's got a bill thing that you catch your bills in when it comes from the mail lady. I've always told we can't, you know, we want to blame the mail lady, Barbara, but we created a mess. Start, I walk by and I say, <laughs> I speak to them. <laughs> you are getting smaller. It used to be, <laughs> you're getting smaller. You're getting smaller. You're going away. I got you. I go to Mark, got you. <laughs> yeah, we bad. We remember, remember Richard Pryor. <laughs> we bad. Yeah, we bad. I'm bad. Come on, somebody. We bad. got time to play we bad I was tired last night and I just to prove a point to the devil because I was wanting to go to bed have you ever been doing something you're like fuck this I've been working all day are you kidding me you ever you had a project and you looked at it and just kept getting bigger let's, let's, I said I said to you what God I ain't going to stop till this paint runs out. The paint never, it wouldn't run out. I was trying to put more paint on the wall so we'd get rid of it, right? But I did it. You know what? I felt better. I felt so good I ate half a pizza when I got done at 1230 last night. And I already had taco soup with you eight hours. You'd have been in bed for eight hours. I'm telling you, if you believe God for it, you speak life into it no matter what you're doing, he will give you the supernatural ability to accomplish it. Right, Beth? Twelve hours, I'm going to come to church. I'm excited. I'm coming to church. God will move heaven and earth. He'll move patience. He'll move, he'll move different. He'll move traffic out of the way. Do anything you want if you have, if you want to come see him. I'm telling you, right? How bad do you want it? Use your words to triumph over every situation instead of putting you deeper into bondage. Start feeding yourself. We did this during the fast. A heavy diet of the Word of God. Read a book. Read some scripture. Start feeding and meditating on the word of God. Pro, this is crazy. Program yourself 
a lot of people get all weird with this. They say, well, you just, you know, you just, you, you know, name it, claim. No, proclaim, start programming yourself by the word of God. If you know it, I know it be true. How many of y'all been rescued by the word of God? I know it's true. So if it was true for me, it's got to be true for my sons. It's got to be true for the daughters. Program yourself with the word of God. Quote scriptures over situations. Any situation that arises, you can Google it. You can go to you, that, what's that one? You know, the, the Bible thing. You need to put it in there, bad day. It'll find scriptures for a bad day. Put it in there, crazy boyfriend. I'm sure it'll find one. Just type it in. I've, I've typed stuff in there just to see what it'll pull up. I put crazy people. It may not pull up crazy people. I'm telling you. Well, Bishop, I don't know. I don't know if that works. I'm telling you right now. You get that? You I'm telling you, do it. Any situation you're going through, but stop. Remember when I used to say, stop, count to ten, or whatever, before you open your mouth. Medit I, Gwen is an expert at this now. Am I right? I'm like, Gwen, when are you going to say something? She's like, I'm chilling over here, man. Speaking to my circumstances, I'll only open my mouth when it's time to speak. I'm like, I was waiting 30 minutes for you to say something. Quote scriptures over your, every situation that arises. And when you do that, it releases faith. Bishop said, if I give, I'm, I'm going to be blessed. I'll be able to feed my people. I'll be able to feed my home. Bishop said, speak to my bills. Now, don't create new ones. Do something else with it. And I'll tell you this. You want to you start giving it to, to needy people. Pay for somebody's pay for somebody's groceries. Be walking to the grocery store and say, God, who do you want me to bless today? Do it. I'm telling you, you, will, you can't imagine the blessings that will come your way. So when you do that, what happens? You get results. Right? My older son's happily married. I'm not telling you marriage is easy. But he's got a beautiful baby now. That it didn't seem like it was possible a few years ago. Right? Garrett now found out this weekend. Is that not a blessing from God? Is that not an answer prayer from God? Amen. Did you ever hear me or my wife ever doubt one time that you would have one? When y'all would say, hey, listen, we gotta do it. No, 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 you're gonna have a baby. Need them. Listen, we gotta replenish the earth with lots of need them. <laughs> say amen. Y'all may not be proud of your heritage, but I'm proud of mine. Hey, I got a lineage. I'm gonna leave a legacy behind that my sons and daughters will do greater than I did. My granddaughter will do greater than I they even did, and their daughter and grandkids will do greater than even they did. Second Corinthians two and fourteen says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us, everybody say through me. Diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Do you know your words can stop the release, stop the ability of God from being released in your life? And it'll put you in such bondage unless you learn to control them. Proverbs 6 and 2 says, You're snared by the words of what? You're, you're, you're. What does snared mean? Are you listening tonight? I'm going to tell you this. I wish somebody taught me this 20 years ago. Oh, you're preaching 20. I wish somebody taught me this 20 years ago. Oh, I was the church. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I was the pastor. You were snared by the words of your mouth. You were taken. Oh, taken by the words of your mouth. Did God not make it plain? Hmm? You can have what you say if you believe in your heart and you do not doubt. Is that true? And he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the, what, Wally? So really, what comes out is really what's, why do you talk about us? Why do you talk about helping the homeless? Why do you talk about doing this? Why do you talk about, because it's in my heart. I've got the heart of an evangelist. I want to see people get saved. I like standing before people, amen, they're putting their babies up on stage because they don't have Aetna, and they don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they don't have, a, they don't have a Medicaid. They don't have any of that stuff. They only hope they got us in Christ Jesus. And this 
crazy guy from Georgia is here and saying, if you believe, you can have it. And they just happen to believe they can have it. We should learn from this. How many times have we had a setback and God got infiltrated the comeback and we came back stronger than we ever were? Say what the word says. Speak over your life in every area. Not just, don't listen to me, please. Not just here at church. Every one of y'all got, every one of us have got situations and we got things going on in our life. The only way you're going to be able to combat it is with your mouth. You can't do it with your, you're not going to do it with your hands. Speak to it. How many of y'all are married? How many of y'all can change your spouse's mind when they done got it made up? Who can? Who can speak to them when you can't speak to them? Come on, let's be honest. Y'all have bad days. I've laid in bed, turned the other way, and said, hey, God, I may be wrong. I may be. If I am, show me. But if she be wrong, show her. Bishop, would you say that? Yes, I would. Because you know what? In the morning, I'm going to know what I'm right or what she was right. How do you know that? Because it works every time. I tell her all the time, I'm praying for you. I'll just pray about it. Go ahead and pray about it. So you pray, I'll pray. <laughs> Come on. Right? That's the only way it's going to work. You got a boss? You, you don't have a boss. She's your boss. You got same, same principle, right? There you go. Your pastor, you want me to change? Pray. Lord, if I be right, Bishop be wrong, show him. I guarantee you, I've learned so much in 20 years, in the last five years, in the last year. Somebody is praying. Right, Sissy? We thought we knew it all. We were in the church. We knew it all. We had a certificate. We had a baptism certificate. We knew everything. We're going to change the world. We didn't know nothing. Do not let the enemy's words manifest in you. Only feed yourself a steady, a steady diet of the God's word, right? Or at least you never said you were set free. Start using your word. Say it to see life come back into you. Don't take a step back. Come on, Sabrina. Come on, Sabrina. Get up. You can tell Sabrina. Say, come on, Sabrina. Come on, Sabrina. Sing. Do what you do. Do what you do, and do it well. Stand to your feet. How many excited about being a believer? How many know that you got situations, but now you can speak to them? It's no different than speak to 